there's nobody like our God. Nobody like our God. Can you tell your neighbor that there's nobody like our God? We adore you, adore you. We declare, we declare. Nobody like you, nobody like you. Say we worship, we worship. Adore you, adore you. We declare, we declare. Nobody like you, nobody like you. We worship, we worship. Adore you, adore you. We declare, we declare. Nobody like you, nobody like you. We worship, we worship. Adore you. Hallelujah. Don't stop there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Continue to give God praise. Yeah. Hallelujah. Why? Because Thank He is. Lord. He is Almighty. Hallelujah. He is the great I am. Yeah. He is the Holy One. The King of Kings. The Lord of Lords. You, Lord. Hallelujah. Jehovah Jireh. Jehovah Nisi. Hallelujah. He is. Yeah.
lords, the king of kings. He is the one that can keep a smile on my face. Hallelujah. When it seems like all else has failed. We serve a God that is awesome. We serve a God that is just glorious. He's holy. He's righteous. We serve a God that deserves all glory and praise. Hallelujah. Come on and give him some glory. Come on and give him some praise. Hallelujah. 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 Anybody believe that he deserves all glory? He deserves all praise. Hallelujah. This is a new song we just want to sing for you. We're just going to sing the chorus of this song. But it's such a beautiful song. This song says, for you alone deserve all glory. For you alone deserve all praise. Hallelujah. Father, we worship and adore you. Father, we long to see your face. For you alone deserve all glory. For you alone deserve all praise. Father, we love you and we worship you this day. Hallelujah. Simple chorus. We're going to sing it. We want you to join in with us and just begin to open up your mouth and speak to God. Can you do that? Can you speak to God? Can you open up your mouth and speak to God? Speak well of him, how much you love him, how much you adore him, how much you need him, how much he means to you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Go ahead and open up your mouth and speak to the Lord. For you alone deserve all glory. For you alone deserve all praise. Father, we worship and adore you. Father, we long to see your face. For you alone deserve. Help us sing that for you alone. For you alone, Jesus. Father, we love you. 
from your heart. Come on, I want to hear you. Come on, open up your mouth and sing to the Lord. Sing unto the Lord. Sense of that. One more time. as we uh, show a video of, um, of our family member that's going to be baptized so they can run it when you have it. Just go on and run it. We'll flow. Righteous life. I have been living super nice. for so long, destroying myself, and, and we'll I don't want to do that anymore. For me, this is one of my first steps into getting on the path of righteousness, um, not just for me, but for my children, so I can be a better mother to them. I can meet God once more.
Baptism is an outward sign of what God has done on the inside of us. We have been born again. He says, if you believe and are baptized, you shall be saved. And it's a, also a celebration. I believe that once in everybody's life, they need to be celebrated. And there is no time like this time <laughs> that, we, that, that they can be celebrated. Will you all do me a favor? Stand on your feet and give her a standing ovation. This is your time. We celebrate with you. Come on, put your hands together. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. We honor you, God. Holly, upon the profession of your faith, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. One more time. Let's praise God with her. We love you, Lord. Glory to your name. We bless you, Lord. We worship you this day. Man, I like that. If any of you all need to be baptized, we want to baptize you. If you haven't been, this is a part of the commandment. He that believeth and is baptized, we want you. We want you to finish the very work that God has for you. God bless you. Um, is there another song? All right. Will you rest to your feet again as they minister to us the last song? Put your hands together for the Lord one more good time. enjoying the Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just a simple chorus. We're going to sing for you. Oh, how we love you. Hallelujah. And oh, how we praise you. And oh, how we worship. Oh, love him. Oh, how we praise you. Come on and lift those hands. Oh, how we worship. Oh, Lord. Come on, let's sing the first one. Our hearts cry. Be magnified. Be magnified. In this your holy In temple. In this your holy in this your holy place, this your holy place, and we will rise, and we will rise to Zion's high, to Zion's high, to praise and glorify, to praise and glorify. Come on and lift your voice, unify. Come on, everybody. Oh, how we love you. Oh, how we love you. Oh, how we love you, Lord. Oh, how we praise you. <laughs> oh, how we praise you. Oh, how we worship. Oh, Lord.
house should have a have a word on, on the inside. There should be something that just springs from you. All of the oh, Lord, I love you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. I bless you, Lord. Hallelujah. Lord, I need you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I need the oh, I need thee. Come on, everybody.
Everything, God's plan for increase and fruitfulness has been a blessing to us all. As always, there are a lot of great things happening, so let's take a look at what's coming up for you and your family at Abundant Faith. This year's Harvest Fest is happening on Wednesday, October 30th at 6.30 p.m. The teen ministry and Christ-like ministry needs lots of candy for this year's event. Please drop off all candy donations to our administrative office at our Taylor Avenue campus. This night is a huge outreach for our ministry and will include a candlelight prayer service where we will personally pray for your needs. For more information, please contact Katrina or LeVar at 217-585-4000. If you want to become a member of Abundant Faith, our new members orientation class is held on the first Sunday of every month at 9 a.m. at our Taylor Avenue campus. We know that prayer can change lives. Our doors are open for prayer every Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday at 6.30 a.m. This prayer is in our prayer room at our Taylor Avenue campus. We also have prayer every Tuesday at 12 noon at our West Reynolds campus. Of course, there's group prayer every Saturday morning at 8 a.m. at our Taylor Avenue campus sanctuary. Our Faith for Today broadcast is on the Fox Network every Saturday at 11 a.m. and WC23 every Sunday at 6 a.m. We also live stream every Sunday at 11 a.m. You can watch this live broadcast at www.live.abundantfaith.org. If you have any questions about the ministry or would like to learn more about the vision of Abundant Faith, then you can meet with our leaders after each service in our family room, which is located to your right as you exit the sanctuary. On behalf of Pastors Jerry and Gita Doss, God bless you. Remember that our best is yet to come and continue to love God, serve people, and make it a great week. Hallelujah. Well, good morning. How's everybody? Blessed, excellent, good, all that good stuff. That's great. That's great. It's a good day. It's a good day to be in the land of the living. Hallelujah. Good worship time on today. Amen. Hallelujah. How about good worship time all week long? Have you been spending some time with the Lord? Amen. That's most important. Your private time, your personal time, your devotion time. I was having some devotion time, and all of a sudden I thought about the word devotion means, in short, devoted. Devoted to Christ. Having some time where you just devote to him. Sometimes we don't think about that. Devotional time, it's all devotional time, but when you're devoted to somebody, then you're sold out. Amen? You want to spend time with that person. Amen? So don't just wait till you come inside these four walls for your time with the Lord, but devote some time to him every day. I'm not going to say sometime this week because every day we should devote some time to him. We want him to devote our time, right? 24 hours a day, we want to live. Amen? <laughs> so we want to devote our time to him also amen we want to hear what he has to say because he's always speaking into our lives amen and it's important that we listen and then walk in it hallelujah thank you lord well i'm excited about uh this wednesday night i am not sure if we're out of these but we shouldn't be out but if we are we'll have more uh by wednesday uh when you come in wednesday you'll pick up a stack of these amen we'll have some time of worship and then we're gonna hit the streets amen so dress warm on Wednesday night. Don't let that detour you. Amen. I bet you the kids are going to be out. If it was this Halloween, if it was Wednesday night, they'd be out and they'd be dressed and they'd be going. They'd be getting some seeds that others want to plant. So we're going to plant some seeds this Wednesday night, okay? So we're going to take these door hangers out. We're going to put them on some doors, take them to wherever we go. We Some may go to the... Uh, some may go to the mall parking lot. Some may go to Menards, wherever we may, God sends us. We just want to go out and be a blessing and plant some seeds. This seed that we're planting is going to be brought back on the following Wednesday night from those who we planted seeds into, amen, and they're going to check on the back in regards to uh, their prayer requests or their prayer needs, and then we're going to pray for these on that next Wednesday night, the 30th, okay? In a nutshell, okay. So we hope to see you all on Wednesday night. Amen, amen, amen. Do we have any first-time guests? It's your first time. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. God bless you. A couple over here and back there. Did I miss them over here? Yes. And in the middle. Hallelujah. Thank you all for worshiping with us on today. Abundant faith. Give them abundant faith. God bless you to our special guests on this morning. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I tell you, it's so important to sow seeds and be nice. Amen. Hallelujah. Have you ever met somebody who was connected with somebody else you know and you didn't know they were connected? And you says, oh, boy, I better be nice. I better watch what I'm saying because you never know who knows who. Springfield's not a big place. <laughs> you find that out quick. That's a good word, Donetta. Be nice. Just be nice. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, we're getting ready to sow some seeds on today. A seed to the harvest, to the kingdom, amen, to the kingdom of God. And I believe I'm for sure that you're sowing into good ground, amen, that will be multiplied, amen. It will bring glory to God and to us, amen. Pastor's talking a good word. He's preaching a good word, teaching a good word the last couple of Sundays and today about sowing and reaping, amen. That's so important. If you want something, you got to sow something. Amen. Hallelujah. The word been good to you? Good for you? You been sowing love, kindness, goodness, all those good things? Read Galatians 5 and 22, the fruit of the Spirit. Those are some of the things we need to be sowing. Amen. Thank you, Lord. We're about to sow a seed on today. I challenge you. I don't challenge you. I just ask you to get your seed in your hand. Amen. Hallelujah, and let's sow some seed to the glory of God. Amen. Let us pray. Father, we thank you again for being so good, so kind, so merciful to us. We thank you for the seed that we hold in our hand, in our hand God. Hallelujah. We are going to plant expecting a harvest, God. We thank you for good health and wealth and wisdom and all that good stuff, God. Hallelujah. We thank you, Father, that you are the resource. And when we have you, we have everything, Father. Your word says that we should plant seed and expect a harvest. And we do so in the name of Jesus. We give you all glory and we give you all honor. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. God bless. Yeah. Hi, Miss Smith. Do you remember me? Katrina from your 10th grade class. I mean, it's been about 20 years ago, and I'm all grown up now, but do you remember me? I can't say that I do. Refresh my memory. Okay. Well, I was the one who, you know, busted out the window. Kind of really don't want to get into it, but do you remember me? Ah, uh, yes, Katrina Allen. Mm-hmm. I remember you were one of my memorable students. <laughs> I've been retired over a year now. But I think of you often, and I wonder, what have you been doing? You know what? I've been doing really, really good. God is good. You know what? This is such a prayer answer because I've been praying to God that I would see you one day so I can just tell you how much you just blessed me and just how much you did for me back then. Well, what did I do? Well... <laughs> You believed in me, okay? You believed in me when nobody else believed in me, not even my parents, not even the other teachers. When they was like, you know what, she'll never amount to nothing. You always believed in me. You always encouraged me. You took time with me. You just really, really loved on me. You told me that I matter to God. That's what you told me. I matter to God and that he loves me no matter how bad I am. And I just want to say thank you so much. And because those things that you did, I have given my life to Christ. Well, praise the Lord. That's wonderful. God is good. And you know what? You may not know this, thank but you, even Lord. though I wasn't paying attention or it looked like I wasn't paying attention, I was listening. I really was. You were? I was, absolutely. And you know what? I had a rough life, you know, went to juvenile, I had to do some time. But the things that you told me, Miss Smith, the, the seeds that you planted, I don't think you really realized, but... You are actually planting seeds in my life, those seeds of encouragement, the seeds of compassion, the seeds of love. You were just really sowing that into my life. And because of that, I gave my life to Christ, and now I'm doing the same thing that you're doing. I'm ministering to troubled and rebellious girls 
giving their life to Christ. I'm sowing those same seeds and telling them about Jesus. And because of it, I have reaped a mighty harvest. Well, look so, at the harvest. Yes, so, so saved. So many teenagers have given their life to Christ. And you know what? It was all because the seeds that you sowed. Well, Katrina, you know that I always knew that if you sow a seed, you will reap a harvest. And you know what, Miss Smith? A mighty, mighty harvest you have reaped. Oh, thank right. you so much. So good to see you. <laughs> you um, the actresses they did a fantastic job didn't they give uh, them a hand is James Johnson in the house I know I saw his son earlier and he said he'll be here James come on up son and uh, give James a hand <laughs> Right and true with thanksgiving I'll be a living sanctuary for you um, James has been coming to this church for a while and uh, he's also part of our men's ministry I know him quite well he also loves going out into the community and making a difference so it just would be appropriate for you to be a part of our local church. I'm glad that you decided to, to actually formally become a, uh, an Abundant Faith member. And you were at the last new members orientation class and you couldn't make the uh, following service. So we said we're going to do it today. I didn't want to uh, forget. <laughs> and I know God has great things for you. We appreciate you. Uh, uh, James, you're a talker. Um, don't preach, but testify. <laughs> Say something, whatever God has put on your heart, man. Appreciate you. Well, I wasn't uh, prepared to give a speech today, but I guess I do what uh, the Lord leads me to. Um, currently, I'm a community organizer here in Springfield. Uh, I moved up here last June. And uh, at the time, I was a real estate broker up in Chicago. And uh, in the course of my work, I had been volunteering for this organization called Action Now. And uh, when I renewed my license, uh, the opportunity to do uh, professional organizing for Action Now uh, was presented to me. So I made a decision, um, you know, which one was more important. I felt that Action Now was like God's will for me and the real estate thing was more about money. And uh, I made the choice then and there that, you know, it was just his will. So I came out here to Springfield, left my son behind. Uh, my family, you know, I don't even have relatives up here, and it was kind of interesting. You, you, you do now, though. We yeah. Got, got <laughs> praise God. Praise God. The abundant faith, man. Thank you all. Um, but, you know, everything that I was concerned about, it was like the Lord gave it, gave it back to me. You know, he said, you be faithful with a little. I make you faithful over much. And the main thing that, uh, that I was excited, that, that I was happy about was, you know, I was concerned about my son. And uh, I get a call, like, I want to say five or six months after I was up here, I get a call from his mom, like, you know, he can come stay with you. So he's up here with me for the entire school year. And, uh, so bless you, man. You know, and uh, Pastor Doss, all the men in our Tuesday morning men's group, you know, I'm, I'm really blessed by y'all. Um, y'all pour into my life. Y'all pour into my son's life. And uh, I'm, just, I'm just grateful to be here. Thank you. Well, we're glad to have you, man. Stay right here just one minute. And just sending out a shout on Tuesday at 6.30. We are here bright and early. And uh, we get into the Word. Man, we love not just this, that, that many men coming together to get in God's Word, to pray, and to encourage each other. is pretty exciting. So uh, we're thankful. This says that covenant, certificate of covenant membership, this certificate of covenant membership uh, certifies that James Johnson, and he's another JJ in the house now, has publicly confessed Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior and has been received into the full covenant membership of the Abundant Faith Christian Center, Springfield, Illinois. On the, this says the 6th day of October, today is actually the 21st day. 
in the year of our Lord, 2013. Pastor Jerry W. Doss, where we walk by faith and not by sight. I place this in your hand, and I place this Bible in your hand. Remember that he told us to take the word of God, and I tell you what, it will make a difference. Not only is it in my hand, but it's in your heart. It's going to make that tremendous difference. Will you all pray with me as I pray for him? Father, thank you for this man of God. Thank you for your plan and your purpose in his life. I thank you, God, that he has a desire to do your will. So therefore, Father, continue to let that fire burn on the inside of him, and may it bring glory to your name. We speak blessings over his life in every aspect. And Father, may he not miss a thing. Yeah, he turned away real estate in order to do your will. I thank you, God, that every financial need be met in Jesus' name. And I say amen, amen. God bless you, man. Appreciate you. With thanksgiving. Hallelujah. God is good, isn't he? Yes, he is. Man, oh man. Those that have your Bible, Bibles, will you turn with me to Galatians, the sixth chapter, and beginning at about the seventh verse. Thank you, worship team and uh, band. We appreciate you. Great job. Give them another hand, too. They did a great job today. I was just so blessed. Selection of songs, etc. just tremendously blessed. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I praise you. With thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary for you. From the top, Lord, prepare me. Lord, prepare me. That's my prayer. To be a sanctuary. Pure and holy, tried and true. That's the only verse I have a little bit of a problem with, tried and true. But with thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary for you. And then there's another song just... Have thine own way, Lord. Have thine own way. Thou art the potter. How many really mean that? I am the clay. You know the next part? Mold me and make me after thine will. For I am way. <laughs> yes, yes, mm -hmm. yes, yes, yes. How many of you all really are yielded to God and His will to be done? It's Thank you, God. I mean, for real. Just go in and give him a praise now. Galatians 6. Seventh verse says, Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, that will he also reap. Read 8th verse, please. Fantastic job. And let us not grow weary while doing good. And King James, let us not grow weary in well-doing. For in due season, we shall reap if we don't lose heart. Thank you, Jesus. And I just, I just come to encourage you today. Uh, I, I just want to encourage you. Just don't lose heart, for your due season is here. I give God glory and praise. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all, especially to those who are the household of faith. He's talking about those that are in your family. 
in your church family. We're going to share today, talking about sowing and reaping. The emphasis today uh, being, you know, slightly different. Different. Uh, we'll focus on reaping not only what we've sown, but reaping what we have not sown. Say it with me. I will reap what I have not sown. Now, I know some say, Pastor, I can't wait for you to explain that one. Are you all ready to get into the Word? As we bow our heads in prayer. Father, thank you for your love. Thank you for your kindness. Thank you for your Word. Now, speak to us and through us. We are ready to receive what you have for us. Father, we prepare our hearts. Thank you, God, that your Word would not return void, but it will accomplish all that you sent it forth to do. Thank you, God, that you sent your word and healed them. There are individuals that need healing today, God. I thank you that your word goes forth and is supernatural healing. So I thank you, God, that your Bible, the Bible says it's forever, O oh Lord, your word is already settled in heaven. It's a done deal. So I just embrace your word. I receive your word. I walk in your word. And by faith, your word is accomplished in my life. Now I praise you and I thank you and I give you glory because it's done in the name of Jesus you agree with that prayer, go ahead and give him your best praise right now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. What a blessing it is to be before you. And if you haven't noticed, the cornfields are uh, filled with combines and people are actually harvesting. Why? Because it's harvest time. The seed was sown some months ago, and now the farmers, the same ones that sow the seed, are in the fields harvesting. Why? Because there is a principle that says, you know, be not deceived. God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he reap. Understand, that is a principle that works today. And not only does it work for Christians, it works for non-believers. You can plant, and it's, a, it's one of God's promises that you're going to see a seed that turns from a seed into a stalk and then brings forth fruit. That's God's plan, God's purpose. He says, as long as the earth remains, seed time and harvest, summer, winter, hot and cold, these things, day and night, these things must take place. That's his promise. It was a blessing when I finally discovered that, that I could give something away that I possessed, and that's my seed, and I would receive something that I didn't currently possess, and that becomes my harvest. A seed is something that we can contribute to someone else. We talked about the seed and sowing, not simply financial, but you can sow from the uh, um, sow health, and you can you will reap health. You can sow relationships, love, and joy and peace. Guess what? You're going to reap what you sow. Can I get a witness? Amen. So, so therefore, he wants us to take the time and sow a seed. You can also give some things away. And again, it is about giving away. And I'm telling you, we live in a day and time where people don't want to give anything away. But if you want to receive, you've got to give. Going to get a witness. Hallelujah in the house. Yeah, if you want to receive, you've got to give. So I have to, we have to press past stinginess. And guess what? It's a lot of stingy folks in the world. Can I get a witness? Amen. Don't look at them. Don't look at them and say, hey, man, he's talking about you, Nudge. You, you a stingy rascal, man. But in order, <laughs> in order for us to be more like God, God is generous. God is, we serve a generous God. He didn't just give, he gave his best. He doesn't just give us anything, but he gave his very best. And I've learned from, from him, I want to be like my heavenly father. I want to give freely. He's not trying to take anything away from you. Can I just reassure you that? I don't care what you're going through, what you've been through. God is not trying to take anything away from you. He's trying to bless you. He wants to do some things in your life that would cause him to receive glory out of your life. How many of you all believe that? <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So therefore, we have to give. We have to bless someone. Now, understand that uh, an hour invested in someone's time, that's a seed that you sow. A kind word, that's a seed that you sow. Even sometimes being someone's friend, that's an important seed that you sow. Loyalty, and it can be in finances as well, but you do a work for the Lord and it is that seed that you sow into the kingdom that brings forth great things. And there's also something called a faith seed. Say it with me, a faith seed. A faith seed is something that you plant with the expectation of a specific 
harvest, a faith seed. You know, I'm sowing this, believing and trusting God that this is going to bring forth a harvest. Are you with me? So I plant it with that expectation. Farmers do this all the time. They plant faith seeds. They may not call it that, but they grow. They plant something in the ground expecting a harvest of something specific, and that is the thing they plant. Now, you know, uh, Coming up, I, uh, you know, was, was trying to make a commitment to the Lord, and I was, I think I was only eight or nine years old, and I uh, had made a commitment to God. It was just based upon not wanting to go to hell, but as I think of this passage, it reminds me of the fact that, yeah, God was touching and preparing my heart even then. Why do you say that? Here's why. Because I was learning about sowing and reaping. My dad had a job. He had a custodian job, but not only was he a custodian, he had a uh, regular job during the day, but he did, he always had a second job because there was nine kids, and nine kids eat a lot, you know, no question about it. And he had a second job, and we would go with him on his, on his second job, and he would pay us a little bit, and I'd come to Sunday school, and my Sunday school teacher, and again, her name was Audrey Hunter. She was about that tall. She about maybe, maybe about that wide. She was the sweetest lady you ever want to know. She, I loved her so much. I once proposed to her. I told her that I loved her and I wanted to marry her. And uh, I was nine, eight, nine years old. And she said, well, son, if you want to marry me when you get 19, she said, you let me know and I'll marry you. And uh, of course, when I got 19, my, that, the story changed. Hallelujah. <laughs> but at any rate, she was just that sweet. But she sent me down and she talked to me and she says, yeah, Wayne, you, you, you made a dollar this week because dad wouldn't pay you much. That was before minimum wage and we was under age too. But uh, he gave us our dollar and we, we, she would say, well, you need to go on and give the Lord 10 cents of that. And she said, if you give the Lord 10 cents, you know, he said that he's going to open up the windows of heaven. And she would explain it to me. And it's an amazing thing that all that you learn when you're in a child. And ever since that day, I continued or made a commitment in my life to set the first side, the first of my increase to God. I said, God, I'm going to remember you first. And uh, at that point, I was like saying, well, you know, I wanted to get real spiritual because I was like saying, well, you know what? I just want to give to God. I'm not even going to expect anything in return. I just want to just give because I don't want anything. I, I don't want to give, you know, thinking I'm going to get something back. And she says, no. She says, I want you to expect something in return because when you plant a seed, you know, what farmer plants a seed and says, well, I don't expect a return? He says, you, as you give, need to expect a return. And I want to let you all know that as you sow into the kingdom of God, you expect a return. Are you with me today? Don't try to be super spiritual. Well, I'm just giving to be given. Expect a return. Do me a favor, witness to a neighbor, neighbor say, say, neighbor, expect a return. Now, see, I just want you to know that you need to expect a return. <laughs> Every time you give, you give with expectation. Why? I'm sowing into good ground. And your word says, I shall reap if I sow. Are you with me? So therefore, God, I thank you so. And I mean, you stand on that. And I was like saying, yeah, yeah, God, thank you, Lord, that I receive your word. Thank you for the mother. And ever since that day, I've been blessed. I've been blessed. Why? Because it's God's principles. I didn't say that challenge didn't come my way and, you know, things didn't happen in my life. They did. But ever since that day, I've committed my heart to giving unto the things of God and to the kingdom of God. And he supernaturally provided both some things that I sowed to and then some things that I didn't so, too, are you with me today? So, therefore, you know, I, uh, that just tremendously blessed me. And, and that kind of brings me to the kind of the, the focal point of this message. Uh, it comes today that because sometimes people walk in condemnation and self-blame, you know, regarding this situation, thinking that what they did or everything they did is a result of where they are right now. But can I let you know that, yeah, certain things you reap, what you sow, but then there are other things that you reap and you didn't have anything to do with. Are y'all still with me? I've got to share both sides of it because I don't want anyone to leave this place in guilt, condemnation, and shame. I want to make sure you know that we have an enemy, and the enemy wants to mess us up. Now, 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 look what the passage says, and you can turn with me to the book of, let's go to the book of John, like the fourth chapter. And it'll tell us some areas in which we actually have uh, reaped and we didn't. So what about John 4 and uh, starting at the 34th verse? And this is written in red, so if you don't believe what's written in black, read. 
believe the red. Hallelujah. It says, Jesus said to them, my food is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. Now, this is Jesus actually uh, talking to the disciples after they had came back and saw him uh, dealing with the woman uh, at the well. And Jesus was talking about reaching out and having intended targets. And uh, the Bible was talking about here. He says, you say that there's still four months and then comes the harvest. But he says, behold, I say to you, you know, he says, you know, lift up your eyes and look at the fields for they are already white for harvest. And he who reaps receives wages and gathers fruit for eternal life. Now, understand, when he talks about eternal life, he's not talking about some natural uh, food. And even when he was talking to the disciples, talking about the food that I know about, you, you know, the food that I eat, you know, you don't even really know about, you can't relate to, because I'm talking about spiritual things. And he's saying to them, he's saying to them that we want to reap this harvest because there are a lot of people that need to know Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And then he goes on and says, both, no, he says, both he who sows and he who reaps may rejoice together. In other words, there are two people, one sowing and one reaping, but they're going to rejoice together. For in this saying is true. One sows, here's one person sowing, and it doesn't say the same one reaps, but who reaps? Another one reaps. Look at the 38th, the 38th verse. I sent you to reap that which you have not labored. How many of you all want some stuff you haven't worked for? That's the old glory. <laughs> Others have labored, and you have entered into their labor. You know, and, and then he says here, because there's a Samaritan woman here that he is having a conversation with, and um, they, Jesus introduces her to him. She receives salvation, and she goes, and she begins to tell the whole city, come meet a man that has told me everything that I've ever done. His name is Jesus, and he, he is the Messiah. Guess what? The city came to meet him. The city got saved because a woman came back and testified of who Jesus was. Are you all with me? You know, so therefore, I want you to know, oh, glory, this is getting clearer even now. The disciples didn't even preach to this city. This woman preached to the city. And they, they, they were saying, you're talking about four months, people are going to get saved. Jesus says, no, open your eyes, lift up your eyes. Look, there's going to be some people getting saved. And the people were coming in saying, what must I do to be saved? I want you to know, folks, that God is going to save people in this hour. And it may not be the way you think it's coming. It may not be through somebody preaching on a Sunday morning. It may not be through somebody teaching on, uh, on the television. They, but they're coming. It may be a woman that just says, what must I do to be saved? Come meet a man called Jesus that has set me free. And you might be that very person. Woo. Help me give him a shout in the house. Hallelujah. We bless you, Jesus. But he says, you're going to enter into another person's, another person's uh, uh, harvest. Check this out. John Osteen, hardly any few people know who he is. He was Joel Osteen's father. He is the one that planted that church, and, and, uh, but he is the man of God. God used, I mean, what a, what a powerful preacher. But his job was to plant. That was his job, to plant and to be a, a, a teacher, preacher. He's kind of both, but he was more of, um, uh, I think, more of a, a preacher. And, uh, and, and people, people say, well, what's the difference between a preacher and a teacher? And I tell them usually about 30 minutes, you know. Yeah, no doubt about it. Why? Because <laughs> preachers proclaim the word, and they proclaim the word with energy. Teachers explain the word, and usually it takes more time to explain than it does to proclaim. Both are important, though. Are you with me today? You need somebody that's in sweating and saying, ah, ha, ha. You need, that's cool. And then after they do that, then you need somebody to teach it. They say, let me show you what they meant. Hallelujah. So instead of us fighting and going back and forth, we need to praise each other for their different gifts. Come on and give God a praise in the house. Thank you, Lord. So therefore, you know, you know, he was saying uh, that, that, that Joel did his part and John did his part, but John 
you know, didn't see all that Joel seen. What do you mean by that? You know, John did what he did, and uh, there, there was a few thousand, but when Joel came on the scene, thousands and thousands came. You know, so who gets the glory? Let me read this scripture to you. In the book of Corinthians 3 and 1 Corinthians 3 and 1, uh, this is Paul writing. He says, I planted the seed in your hearts. Apollos watered it, but it was God who made it grow. In other words, God gave the increase. He says, it's, it is important, it's not important, who does the planting or who does the watering. What is important is that God who makes it grow. The one who plants and the one who waters work together with the same purpose. What is that purpose? That purpose is bringing glory to God. Are you with me today? And the Bible says, and both will be rewarded for their hard work. Ah, for we are workers together with him. Man, I love that passage. My goodness. You say, Pastor, well, what does that look like? Well, that may look like this. Since uh, Sean is on the front row and and also um, um, on the other side is Ty, and I played ball with Ty. I haven't played with Sean yet, but it would kind of look like this. We're on the same team, and the team is called the God team. Why? Because God is leading us. And um, uh, uh, Ty happens to be a ball handler, so he's playing the, the, the one, and uh, Sean is playing the two, and uh, I'm playing down low, you know, because not because I'm tall, but because I got ups. And, uh, and sometimes your ups have to make up for your height. And uh, so he's taking the ball down and because um, God has given me my ability, God has given him his ability, and God's given Sean his ability. We're all on the same team. And uh, what would be wrong is if we were fighting, give me the ball, give me the ball. No, that's my ball, give me the ball. And that would be a real problem. And, uh, but, 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 but what's happening is we have a good point guard. He knows who the finisher is. And uh, since I'm telling the story, I'm the five, and uh, he knows who the finisher is, <laughs> and he, he brings a ball down court. He throws, he throws an oop. Um, that, that's an alley oop, folks, and, um, and, 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 and Doss jumps up. You know, he takes it in one hand. He s- jumps, leans, and boom, slams it. But, but any, I don't care about the credit because it's not to him who planted nor him who watered. But it's the God team who gets the increase. Are you with me today? I don't know what your ability may be. I don't know what your talent may be. I don't know what God has placed on the inside of you. But if you learn how to give him the glory and forget about you and and, and patting you on the back and this should be mine, God can get the glory. What if that would happen in the church? When nobody's worrying about my, my, me getting any credit and what I can do and what no one else can do like I can do it. But the Bible said it's not about him, him who planteth nor him who watereth, but rather about him who makes it grow and him who causes it to increase. I want you to know that God has a plan and a purpose for our life, and I want to yield to it. Now, check this out. One more verse in the book of Joshua, the 24th chapter. And it says, and this is Joshua just sharing that some things you're going to uh, uh, reap that you didn't do and what you didn't sow. Why this is important, folks, is that we must have a heart of thanksgiving because where we are, we didn't get here by ourselves. Can I get a witness? You know, this particular passage says, I sent the hornet before you, which drove them out before you. In other words, you weren't even there, and I sent hornets to do your work. Also, two kings of the Amorites, but not with your sword or your bow, I have given you a land for which you did not, what? And a city which you did not, and dwelled in them. It says, you eat of the vineyard and olive groves which you did not, did, do you get the message there are some things that God is going to give you that you didn't have any, anything to do with it? You didn't work it out. You didn't fix it out. You didn't sort it out. God just says, I'm giving this to you. Now, how many of you all know that's the grace of God that wants to bless you? But you've got to be in a mindset that if he begins to give it to me, I'm, going, I'm not going to say, well, I didn't work for it, therefore I'm not, I'm not worthy of it. No, he wants to give you some stuff that you didn't work for. I um, was uh, earlier, I think earlier this year, uh, there were some things taking place, and I began to ask God the question. I said, God, you know, uh, what did, (laughs) 
Because I'm, I'm telling you, folks, if, um, if you don't take on guilt condemnation because something didn't happen, you have to be careful that you don't take on pride and arrogance because something did happen. So I begin to ask, Lord, 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 you know, what did I do differently then that caused success that I'm not doing now? Any of you all ever had one of those moments? And, and, the, and, the, and the Lord spoke back to me so clearly and said, nothing. I said, what do you mean nothing, Lord? He said, you didn't do anything then to merit the blessings I gave you. You reaped where another man sowed. And I was like saying, wow, you mean to tell me? Sometimes we get so full of ourselves, we think that it's be something we're doing because we're praying so hard or because we preach so well. But God just wanted to bless some people and he just sent them your way. It wasn't because you've done anything. It was because God is good. Can I get a witness today? Somebody give God a praise. Some of you all think, some of you think that you got the job you have because you've done something so well, or you think that, you know, you're in the position that you are because you, or your children are acting so well because you did something, but sometimes it's not you. Sometimes it's God intervening in your life to bring about his will and his purpose, and I give God praise, and I give God glory. Help me shout in the house today. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. But just like that is true, hallelujah, also it's true that we reap some bad things that we didn't sow. Wow, he gets quiet on that. Uh, I, I have some something, I have, uh, I think Chris is ready. If, if he's not ready, whoever is ready, they can make, roll that up there for me. Uh, that you reap bad things that you didn't sow. I, you know, yeah, you said, Pastor, well, this is kind of confusing. Well, I just want to clarify some things, Yeah. You will reap what you sow is what the Scripture says. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. Whatsoever man soweth, that shall you reap. But not only shall you reap what you sowed, you'll reap some. Why don't you bring it over here to where I am, please? Y'all mind? You mind? Thank you, sir. Appreciate it so much. You are such a blessing. Y'all give, y'all, y'all, y'all give Paul a hand. Love him a bunch. <laughs> But you reap some stuff you didn't sow. You know, you said, Pastor, you know, what is all that? Well, can I tell you all of that came from the midst of all of this? This is the fruit. But do you all know that when you plant fruit, some other stuff grows in the garden as well? You know, you can't even, you can't plant a garden and only get fruit. In the same garden that that fruit came up or came from, all these weeds, and I'm talking about some weeds, weeds. Now, how many of you all know that, that, that uh, we, that we didn't sign up for this? <laughs> we didn't plant this. And I really didn't know. I was like, where does all these weeds come from? How many of you all have a yard that, uh, <laughs> that uh, even when it comes to you know, you, 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 you uh, fertilize in your yard and cutting the grass. And if you don't take care of weeds, your weeds will take over the grass. And you did not plant it. You didn't plant it. This is a result of what by sin came into the world. And, and I, I could elaborate on that some. But there are certain things that come just because we live in a fallen world. Are you with me today? It wasn't because I messed up. It wasn't because I'd done so, such good things. The weeds came because, you know, they just are weeds. How can I explain? I said, I, I, I Googled. I said, where do weeds come from? And uh, they said, <laughs> they said, Weeds come from the air, you know, just weed seeds. They said sometimes animals bring weed seeds on their feet. They said sometimes birds drop out of the air, stuff that drops in. To, so, so listen, life is full of weeds. You can, try to, you can try to avoid them, but life is full of weeds. And sometimes you've got to recognize that I don't care how I live because, see, I thought that you know, if I did good and if I treated everybody just right and if I loved everybody, that they was all going to treat me right. 
It was all going to just be so nice and kind to me. I thought that now that I'm a Christian, that I could just tiptoe through the tulips and it would all be wonderful. Just love everybody and, and everybody's going to give you love. Did any of you all think like that too? Man, and as soon as I, as soon as I, I was a little bit, <laughs> I, I, uh, they, they, I was in one neighborhood and we moved to the projects and man, I found out quickly that that wasn't the case. <laughs> You're going to get a behind whooping if you don't, man, you be, so what are you grinning about? Pop! <laughs> Why? It's life, folks. It's life. And you've got to recognize that life is full of weeds. And, and I know that sometimes when you get weeds in your life, you know, you have to know how to deal with them. And some people say when you get weeds in your life, roll them up and smoke them. But that's not how you deal with it. <laughs> oh, now some of y'all finally woke up. Hallelujah. <laughs> that's not a good... Brittany, you didn't like my joke. Uh, I'm, just, I'm just joking, folks. Woo! But when you don't have some weeds in your life, no question about it. So you've got to know how to deal with it, and you've got to recognize, number one, that you did not sow that weed. Will you help me out? Say, I didn't sow that weed. Now, the enemy would like to say, see what you did, see, you did this, and because your life is jacked up because of this and because of that. But I didn't sow. Every bad weed that came up in your life, it wasn't because you sowed something. Are you with me today? I don't want you to be under guilt, under condemnation, under shame. You know, you know, every divorce wasn't because you messed up. Every, every firing on a job wasn't because you messed up. Sometimes people just didn't like you. Sometimes the devil tried to take you out. Sometimes, y'all don't hear me today. Sometimes the enemy wants to make an open spectacle of you. Sometimes the enemy wants to destroy you. That's why it says, don't be weary in well-doing. In due season, my due season is coming. I don't care what it looks like. My season is coming. Somebody give God a shout in this place. Some things are just based upon we live in the sin-filled world. There's a scripture that says, and I just call your attention to it, and I'm going to go further, but, but I want you to just, to just to think about it. It says, therefore, and this is Romans 5 and 12, it says, therefore, just as through one man sin entered the world, and death through sin, and thus death spread to all men because of all sin, you've got to know that, you know, some things happen because we are in a sin-filled world. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And what must we do? We must recognize that things are going to happen. Go with me to the book of, the book of uh, Job. Hallelujah. And some of you say you thought that was Job and you was trying to turn away from it. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. In, uh, in Job... The first chapter, if I could just um, share just some background, Job is, is wealthy. He's a man that loves God. He has children. He has cattle. He has sheep. He has goat. He has oxen. And he has plenty of it. And the scripture says that... that uh, there was a man named Job, and that man was blameless and upright. And, and I would love for you to underline blameless and upright. See, because a lot of people, they think about this passage. The first thing they want to do is try to find out why he's dealing with what he's dealing with. Because, uh, you know, folks always want to just, you know, link sin to why you're in the middle of a challenge. And he was, again, blameless, upright and one who feared God and shunned evil. And he had seven sons, three daughters. They were born to him and also possessed 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camel, 500 yoke of oxen, 500 she donkeys, 
and a very large household, and that this man was greatest of all the people in the east. And uh, as I look at this, you know, man, this dude loves God, got a family, he's got some bling going on, you know, truth be known, and, uh, and he's still, you know, giving God his all. And that's a good place to be, isn't it? And then sometimes we say, okay, we got it going on like that, you know, and people say, yeah, God is with you. God is with you. Man, God is just with that person because look how blessed they are. But then look what it says also in the sixth verse. Now, uh, sixth verse, and now there was a day when the Son of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan, whenever you see that Satan word, watch out, also came among them. And the Lord said to Satan, from where do you come? So Satan answered the Lord and said, from, uh, from going to and fro on the earth and from walking back and forth on it. So, you, so Satan's just busy. What is he doing? I'm looking for some mess to get in. Any of you all know some folk that act like that? <laughs> they run around going to and fro looking for something to get into. And then the Lord said to him, have you considered my servant Job? Thanks a lot, Lord. He said, and there is none like him on the earth. Again, he is blameless. And then say that he was messing up, that he was full of pride, that he missed God or something. You know, they're, they're quick, people be quick to tell you, well, you just miss God. <laughs> he didn't say he missed God. He says he was blameless and upright. And one who fears God and shuns evil. And the answer said to the Lord, you know, does, does, does Job fear God for nothing? Have you made a hedge around him and his household for all that he has, for he, all that he has on every side? You have blessed the works of his hand. Even Satan recognized that Job had been blessed. Thank you, Jesus. Satan testified to Job's blessings and how God blessed him. He says, but now stretch out your hand and touch all that he has, and he will surely curse you, you to your face. Wow. As I look at this passage, first of all, Job is, you know, he's just going about doing his daily stuff and handling his business, and, and there's a conversation in heaven. Can you imagine a conversation, uh, them talking about Job, all the people you talk about? And thank you, God, the Father, for saying, have you considered me? How many of you all are ready for God to say, have you considered my servant? I ain't putting my name there, your name, hallelujah. <laughs> have you considered them? You know, they're blameless and upright. They're doing the right thing. They're walking along and, you know, they're sowing good seeds. Have you considered them? And he said, the only reason that he's serving you, the enemy said, is because of all the blessings and and, and the Scripture goes on and says that, that Job loses his property and his children, all ten of them. Now, understand, folks, that it'd be one thing to lose a child but lose all ten children, seven sons, three daughters, and, and now you have a situation where you, are, um, you, 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 you had something going on, but now it's taken from you, and and, 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 and you are, you, you, know, you know what the Scripture says? i got to show you this because this many times people, that, that they minimize. And people talk about, well, Job did this and Job that and Job. Man, you better recognize Job was a great man. Job was a great man. Do, do you recognize that the Bible says in the 20th verse, then Job rose, and this is after they had struck his children, his family, and stuff like that. The Bible says Job rose, tore his robe, shaved his head, fell on the ground, and worshipped. Can I ask you today, if you're in the midst of a situation and you lost your family and you lost your property, how many of you all would worship? It's, it's just a question. It's just a question. How many of you all would, 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 would say, God, you know, I, I, I know you live. I still know that you're God. I still love you. I still bless, bless you. I still honor you. I still offer up worth to you. You know, I'm not talking about having church on Sunday where everything is all good and everybody's saying amen to what you're saying and everything is going your way and you, you just did this and that. No, if things went haywire, would you fall on your face and you lift up your eyes to God and say, God, I worship you because because you are still God. 
Are you with me today? Some people are only doing good church on Sunday because it makes them feel good. They want to have a church experience, but sometimes when you're outside of the church, you still got to worship him with no band, with no praise team, with nobody leading anything, no microphone, no sound man, just you and God. I worship you. Things aren't like I want them to be, and I did the right thing. I sowed the right seed, but I got a bunch of weeds. I don't understand it, but I do know you're God. Are you with me today? Somebody give God a shout in the house. As I looked at this passage and I thought about the very fact that Job worshipped God and man, I said, Lord, you know, and, and, and many times we've had challenges in our life that, 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 that make us wonder. And all we have to do is some small thing. You know, I, I lost a job, God. You know, oh, God, are you still with me? Come on. You know. This, 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 this person left my life or this, they, you know, hey, you know, there's another one. Hello in the house. Thank you, Jesus. I broke a nail. Stocks didn't go up like they should have been. You know, I mean, any kind of thing, we'll be in this whole thing, but Job worshiped God. Then the Bible tells us that Satan... And God had another conversation in the second chapter. And it goes on down the second verse. It says, the Lord said to Satan, from where do you come? Like he was going to say something different. Satan doing the same thing. Can I let you know, folks, you've got an enemy? You've got an enemy that wants to destroy you at every turning point. You know, he wants to break you down, makes you want to doubt, makes you want to fear. And, 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 and he says, where are you, Satan? He says, I'm going, what are you doing, Satan? I'm going to and fro on the earth and walking back and forth on it. And then the Lord says again, the second time, have you considered my servant Job? After my children are gone and my property are gone, consider me, what else do I have? They begin to, here's, here's this other verse, you got to check it out. He's got, he says that he is blameless, upright man, one who fears God and shuns evil, and still, he says, even after all this, and still he holds fast to his integrity, although you incited me against him to destroy him, what? Without cause. In other words, he, see, folks, some things happen in your life and you haven't done anything. You've got to grab that because it's time out for you beating yourself down and, you know, woe is me. It'll be like this for the rest of my life. No, some things have happened, but it doesn't mean you've done them. But God wants to take it and turn it around for his good and your good that he might receive some glory out of the very midst of it. Somebody give God praise. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. As I look at this passage, he says, he says, this, the scripture says, be not deceived. God is not mocked whatsoever thing a man soweth, that shall he reap. And he says, in due season you shall reap if you faint not. Well, what is my due season? My due season is whatever, what, whatever time it takes, however long it takes. Now, people trip on that. You know, he said, well, you know, what is, you know, and I, I talked earlier, the gestation, the shortest gestation for a, um, um, uh, an animal is 16 days. They are pregnant for 16 days and then it gives birth. You know what that animal is? It's called a Virginia possum. And uh, that's just some, what do they call that? Uh, when, when it's just a little tidbit of information. They call that trivia. Thank you. That's just a little trivia. Uh, so a Virginia possum gets pregnant and in 16 days brings a baby forth. Women, wouldn't that be nice? That's if you want to deliver some possums, but you don't want to do that. <laughs> the longest gestation period is 685 days, and that's by an elephant. An elephant, you know, 685 days when an elephant's pregnated, 685 days later, you talk about bringing forth, but they bring forth a, 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 a 250 to 300 pound baby. Now, that's a big old baby. Woo! That's like two grown-ups. Can you imagine? But it's based upon what you're bringing forth. Follow me. 
my uh, daughter-in-law is expecting, and I'm about to be a grandfather of a little girl, and we're excited about that. Uh, but Dion, yep, 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 yep. Dion planted the seed some months ago. I don't know if he remembers the time or whatever. But no, I'm, I'm just saying, I'm date-wise, folks. My goodness. But the gestation, the gestation period for a woman is nine months. That's my point, folks. Y'all had to go somewhere else. So December the 11th, she, around that time, she'll bring forth. Now, follow me here. Your gestation period is based upon what you're bringing forth. God has planted some things on the inside of you. And some of you all want to birth it real quick, but it's not finished. It's not incubated. It's not fully done. And if you bring it forth too early, it's going to die. God says, no, you've got to wait because what I put in you is going to bring forth and it's going to make a major difference. But you've got to wait and be patient. Your due season, you're going to bring forth. But don't try to rush your due season. Ah, somebody help me praise him today. So many of us try to rush what God is doing because God says, I'm doing some things. And I know Joe probably wanted to rush some things. He's going to get a witness. And he's like saying, man, this thing is, Lord, I ain't trying to do this. Well, what are you trying to do in me? So his body became, you know, boils and like leprosy on his body and, 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 he had friends that came to see him, and, 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 and they saw him, and when they saw him disfigured like that, you know, his friends began to look, and they said, oh, man. You know, have you ever saw anybody that you know used to have it going on, they were at the top of their game and everything going well, and now you see them, and they're down in the dumps, and they don't look the same, they don't talk the same, they don't have what they used to have, and the first thing we want to do is say, what did you do? What, how did you mess up? You know, no, no, and, and the man, his, now this is his friends. I didn't say his enemy, his friends. Somebody say with me, his friends. His friends came to him, and, and they spent seven days talking noise. Seven days and seven nights. That's a long time. They was like saying, man, what, ooh, what's, all, ooh, these, man, ooh, look at your head, look at this. These are boils. Look at this. Oh, you used to be, look, you done got all skinny. Now, oh, man, you must have sinned. I don't know where you sinned, what you did, but God doesn't do this to his people. Not to just people. God doesn't do this. Job began to doubt himself. Job began to wonder. He says, now, are they telling me stuff? How many of you all got some friends that when they come to you to comfort you, sometimes you don't feel comforted? Sometimes you feel worse after they came to speak their little peace of mind than you did before they came. Are you with me today? They start trying to tell you, well, you must have sinned. This must be wrong, and, and, and you miss God, and, and, and all this. Is begin but it's not always that. Sometimes God wants to use you to get the glory out of your life, and I know it don't seem like it's fair. Where'd these weeds come from? I didn't sow them. I don't deserve them. But God, if somehow you can get the glory, my life belongs to you, God. It's getting quiet in the house today. And the truth be known is people, they really don't want to hear that particular message. Can I get a witness? Because they, who wants weeds in their life? Bible says his wife, you know, she looked at him and said, man, you ought to curse your God and die. His friends, they came to the conclusion that certainly he has sinned. Can I let some of you all know today that I don't care who comes in your life and even those friends and they try to tell you how you messed up and and how, you know, no one would be in the condition or the situation that you're in except you messed up everything you didn't bring on yourself. Some things are just weeds. 
and the enemy has come and tried to sow negative weeds, and they're trying to make you lose heart. But you've got to say, like Job did, that, uh, uh, you know, the Lord liveth. The, the, no, I don't even want to use that scripture. He said that the Lord giveth, the Lord taketh away. But he said that when he was hurting. But he said, I know my Redeemer lives. I don't care how things look. Look, I know my Redeemer lives. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You know, when I look at this passage and I see where we are, I said, Pastor, well, how does that relate to us as a church? Wow, or, or us as a, a, a ministry that's moving forth. I'm glad you asked. When I was praying to God, God began to share with me. He says, um, you know, your best is yet to come. He shared that with me several months ago. And uh, then he said, you would be remiss to tell the people their best is yet to come without showing them how to receive their best. And then I began to teach you on sowing and reaping and, and you know, placing something in the ground because it would not be smart to think that you're going to get a big harvest if you never place anything in the ground. Are you with me today? So therefore, faith without works is dead, so you've got to, you know, plant so you can get a harvest. Now, and then he began to say, now, now follow me, he said, Job's best was yet to come. I know that went over a whole bunch of folks' head. I, I'm going to, I, I, I was going to say I feel like Eddie Long, but I don't want to say that no more. <laughs> Follow this. Job's best was yet to come, but Job had to go through hell before he got to his best. And y'all, 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 y'all don't hear me today. Oh, ah, glory, glory. Somebody just help me praise him just for a minute. Says, ha, 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 hey, glory. Woo. My God, my God, my God, my God. I said, God, you're not saying this because I'm not trying to hear that, God. He says, no, son, your best is yet to come. Job's best was yet to come, but he had to go through a due season. But in his due season, I'm going to bring him out, and I'm going to bring you out, and I'm going to do such an awesome work in your life and watch people stand back and say, man, God was with them. Oh, God. Somebody give God a good shout in the house. Y'all might as well stand on your feet. Come on, let's praise him real good. We bless you, Lord. We honor you, Lord. We adore you, Father. No one can do us like you can. Thank you, Jesus. We worship you. We praise you, God. Help me give him praise right in the midst of it. We give you glory, God. We adore you, Father. You're God in the midst of my situation, in the midst of my challenge. We bless you, God. Hallelujah. 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 Woo. Oh, glory. <laughs> Have you ever heard or received a revelation and you was like saying, God, I don't know if I like that one. I don't know if I like that one, Lord. And he was like saying, son, it's not about you. It's about me receiving the glory out of your life. I was like saying, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Can I share this with you? Stay, you can just hang right there. Thank you, God. His presence is here, no question. Check this out. Job was in the midst of his stuff, and it didn't just happen for a day or two days or a month or two months. He went through some things, and some of you all may be in the midst of some things right now. Can I just get a witness in the house? You may not understand it. All you know is you didn't sow it. You don't know where it came from. Can I let you know an enemy has done this? <laughs> Woo. Thank you, God. 
There's those that say, well, yeah, well, this is going to happen because you did this or you should have did this. Listen, the Bible says, forgetting those things that are behind me. Why does it say that? Because I can't change that what's behind me. I can't change what's behind me. Are you with me today? I can't change what I did, how I did it. It's behind me. Forgetting those things that are behind me, I press toward the mark of the high calling, which is in Christ Jesus. I'm going forward. Thank you, God. Job. Job sits there. I know he's pondering, but in the midst of his pondering, he's, he's worshiping God and no kids and his daughter and sons and property is gone. And all of his, his stuff is gone. His body is covered with sores. But he says, on my appointed time, I'm going to wait till my change comes. Woo! Because if I do leave you, God, where am I going to go? I can't go back. I can't let the devil have me. I got nowhere to go but forward, God. I'm going on in you, Lord. Uh -huh. Job loses his mind. Hear me? Just for a minute. What do you mean, Pastor? He began to say, well... God, I just, I, I need to have a conversation with you. In fact, I ain't happy with you right now. And I don't like the way you're doing things. Because I tried to serve you all my life. Can I preach today? How many of you, if you all ever had one of those things? God, I served you. I praised you. I gave my tithes. I showed up at church. And now why this? Job, it's Job said, God, you're an you're unjust God. Oh, Lord. God says, Job, come here, boy. Paraphrasing. He says to Job, he says, uh, <laughs> he says, who is this that darkens my counsel without knowledge? You don't know what I got in store. You don't know what I'm doing in the midst of what's happening underneath. He said, where were you when I hung the star? Where were you when I called forth the, the, where were you, Joe? Where were you? You don't know nothing. I'm God. I do what I want, when I want, with who I want. I know you think it looks bad, but when I get done with you, you're going to have a testimony. Uh. Somebody get Michelle in this place. Oh, glory. Oh, glory. We bless you, God. Somebody help me worship him. Glory to your name, Jesus. Glory to your name. I mean, don't stop worshiping him. We bless you, God. We adore you, Father. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. Glory to your name. Glory to your name. Woo! I feel a shout coming home, folks.
Thank you, God. Thank you, Father. 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 That young lady that's right next to you, Mom, God has seen your heart, and he says he doesn't want you to operate in condemnation or shame any longer, but he has a plan and a purpose for your life. You will go forth, and you will do what he's called you to do. He's blessed your future. Leave the past behind and move forward. Y'all help me just praise God just for that woman. presence is in the place. His presence is here. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Mm-mm-mm. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. I end on this note. The Bible says that after Job had a conversation with God and God placed Job placed things in proper perspective Job returned not only asked God to forgive him got on the right track back on track but then he prayed for his friends the same friends that talked down and bad about him Can I let you know, folks, it's time for you to pray for your friends, even the ones that have messed over you and talked bad about you. And after he prayed for them, God restored everything. He gave him double the camels and double the oxen and double. He hooked him up, folks. I believe God wants to give you double for your trouble. What the devil meant for weeds, God's going to take and do a thing in your life that he's going to make the world look and say, God's hand is truly upon their life. Come on and give a shout. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I'm trying to let you go, but let me talk to this group right out here. You may be watching by TV. You may be in your bedroom. You may be in the hospital room. Can I let you know? that God has a plan for your life. Don't be weary in well-doing because in due season, I don't know what season that is, it takes as long as it takes. You just don't lose heart. Don't faint. Don't give up because God wants to give you double for your trouble. Won't you put your hands together for him? Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Woo! I'm all right now. I feel all right now. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. We bless you, Lord. Heads are bowed in the house. Some says, Pastor, I heard the message today, and I want to give my heart to God. If you're here today and you're not saved, I just want you to stick your hand up because we want to welcome you to the family, to the best family in the world, the family of God, if you're here. Want you just to say, yes, God, I want to make you my choice. Somewhere else says, Pastor, I I kind of did my own thing, but I'm ready to come running back to him. I want to rededicate my life. If you're here and you're ready to rededicate your life, stick your hand in the air. We'd be more than happy to pray for you. I see your hand. Anyone else? God bless you, son. Young man in the back. I see you. God bless you. God bless you as well, young lady. I see your hand as well. I see you. God bless you all. God has something so special for you. He wants to give you double for your trouble. It wasn't always because you messed up, but it was because there's an enemy that tried to destroy you. Someone else, you've been dealing with your past. You've been struggling because the enemy has put guilt, condemnation, and shame on you and told you that your future is done. But can I let you know God wants to wash away all those past things and place you on a path that brings glory to him. If you're here and God, and you just believe God wants to do a work in your life, even in the, even as it relates to your future and your fast past being forgiven, I want you to come forth and we want to pray for you as well. Thank you, Jesus. There's some families. I thank you, God. Some families that God's...